could be the beginning of something big. It's Brandon Jones's first ever mile and a half race at a NASCAR Xfinity Series track, and this is his last race of the year for Richard Childress Racing. Of course, he will be full time in that organization in 2016. NASCAR can be a strange sport. Sometimes a driver that is expected to do well flops hard, and other times a driver who nobody expected to do well rises through the ranks to become a NASCAR Cup champion. These expectations placed on a certain driver can sometimes amp up the already immense pressure to perform. Sometimes driver development takes longer than others, and a major example of that being both Martin Truex Jr. and Joey Logano taking years before they were finally ready to become Cup Series champions. But when that development takes a long time, it can sometimes lead to a driver being unfairly called a bust, and one of those drivers in my opinion is Brandon Jones. I'm Alex Gallagher and on this fifth edition of After the Flag, we're starting this week we'll be taking a look at a few perhaps unpopular opinions around the world of NASCAR. First up on the docket is the opinion that Brandon Jones isn't really as bad as everyone might say he is. A driver who has been very good in the lower tiered series, Jones has struggled during his time in both the Xfinity series and trucks, but as of late he has seemed to really hit his stride. Sit back, Strap in, and by the end of this video, I hope to show you that Brandon Jones is potentially one of NASCAR's rising stars, and not one of NASCAR's biggest busts. And disclaimer, for continuity's sake, I'll be breaking down Jones' career by series, as opposed to by year, so it's a bit less confusing. Jones made his stock car debut in 2012 at the age of 15, driving for Eddie Sharp in the k and Pro Series East at Greenville Pickens Speedway. Sponsored by his father's company, Ream, Jones would go on to run a respectable debut before tangling with Bubba Wallace on the next to last lap. Making his first and only attempt at a full season in 2014 driving for Turner Scott Motorsports, Joan would open the season with a third at New Smyrna. Locking six more top tens and a second at five flags, the momentum for Jones would start to build before heading into the East-West Combination Race at Iowa. A massive 43 car field would take to the track, proving to be the series' biggest race of the year. The late caution would set up a 12 lap dash to the finish, and an opportunity came for someone to pounce on the dominant car of the day, Cole Custer. After Sergio Pena would muscle Custer out of the way, Jones would pass Pena and lead the final nine laps en route to his first and only career series victory. Locking three more top tens and a fourth place points finish, Jones's 28 combined K&N Pro Series starts would see one win, six top fives, and 14 top tens. Jones started running in the Arkham Menard series in 2014. He made a strong impact right out of the gate. Making his series debut at the historic Winchester Speedway driving for Turner Scott, Jones started second and led on and off throughout the day. On the final lap, Jones managed to pass a dominant Mason Mitchell to secure his first ARCA win in his very first ARCA start. Move. Frank Kimmel has to get the 44 out of the way. We'll see what happens. These two will settle it. Mitchell in the 98. Here he Jones goes. Brandon Jones with the dive bomb move. Oh, he puts the slam on him. Gets Mitchell sideways and Brandon Jones wow. is the winner. A last lap pass at Winchester for Brandon Jones. And Momentum carried Jones into a second start two races later at Lucas Oil Raceway. Starting on pole for the first time in his career, Jones took on the likes of Justin Boston and Frank Kimmel. He would go on to lead 51 laps and score his second win in only his second attempt in the series. As Brandon Jones works through three and four, he's going to remain perfect. His last start, he went to victory lane. That was also his first. This is his second start. He'll win again in the Arca Racing Series. In 2015, Jones would run a 10-race deal with Venturini Motorsports. Although he wouldn't record any wins that season, he would lead 138 laps and score 5 top 5s. From 2016 to 2018, Jones would run a total of 10 more races and log 1 win each season. Jones would score 2 wins in Michigan, a win at Charlotte, and finish his ARCA career with a total of 5 wins, 15 top 5s, and 17 top 10s with 344 laps led. Although it may have seemed a little bit rushed, Jones started running in the Gander Outdoors Truck Series in 2013 at the age of 16. Making his debut at Bristol, Jones finished 27th, five laps down. In 2014, Jones would log his first Truck Series Top 5 at Dover. Jones would run his most complete season in 2015, running 17 races for GMS Racing. Scoring four Top 5s and a runner-up finish at Iowa and Talladega, Jones would continue running part-time in the Truck Series. 2016 to 2019, Jones would run five races per year. However, 2019 would see two of Jones' most standout races. Running for KBM, Jones would show immense speed at both Chicagoland and Phoenix. Starting 19th at Chicago, Jones would fight his way through the pack before finishing runner-up to Brett Moffitt. 
Meanwhile, at Phoenix, Jones would take an early lead after Stuart Friesen was penalized on the initial start. Leading for 36 laps, Jones would eventually be a bridesmaid again, losing it to a hard-charging Friesen. The NASCAR Xfinity Series would prove to be Jones' most successful effort. Adding to his busy 2015 season, Jones made his Xfinity Series debut at Iowa for RCR. Jones would go on to finish 8th in that debut. For 2016, RCR would sign Jones for his first of two full-time seasons in the number 33 Chevrolet. In his two seasons at RCR, Jones would struggle, locking a best finish of 6th. Jones would conclude his full-time stint at RCR with no top 5s, 15 top 10s, and 7 DNFs. For 2018, Jones and his sponsors Menards and Ream would jump ship to Joe Gibbs Racing. Although he would struggle in his first season in the new equipment, Jones would log two top fives and 17 top tens in his debut season with the JGR camp. However, in 2019, Jones would start to put his name on the map. After opening up the year with two consecutive top fives, Jones would start to struggle during the summer months. Having standout races at Bristol, Charlotte, Loudoun, and Kentucky, Jones would head into the playoffs hoping for a bit of a turnaround. Come Kansas, Jones was ready to answer the call. Starting second and sporting a brand new sponsor, Flo, Jones would navigate his way through all of that race's carnage to claim his very first Xfinity Series victory, beating out both Chase Briscoe and Tyler Reddick. It's going to be great, Rick. Where are they going to go in three and four? How tight will it be? Brandon Jones trying to get his first win ever in the Xfinity Series. Reddick up high. He's going to have momentum as he comes out of four. Does he have enough time? Reddick tags the wall. It's going to be Brandon Jones winning in Kansas! Heading into the 2020 season, Jones would have high expectations for both himself and his number 19 team. Locking a 4th at Daytona and a 6th at Las Vegas, Jones would score pole at Fontana and see what could have been his best race yet. Leading 73 laps and winning the first two stages, Jones would encounter some mechanical problems and finish 30th. Seeking redemption at Phoenix, Jones knew exactly what he had to do. Starting 8th, Jones took on the likes of Cup Series stars Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski. In a drama-filled race, Jones would take the lead from Kyle Busch with 20 to go and hold off all who opposed him for not just his second win ever, but his redemption as well. For the first time ever, Jones would lock himself into the playoffs with a win, and once the season picks up following the unfortunate postponement, Jones looks to make a serious push for the championship. Oh boy, this might stir up a bit of controversy, but even after all the stats I presented, I still believe that Brandon Jones isn't the worst driver in NASCAR. Far from it, actually. Has he had a few bad seasons? Mm, yeah. Has he struggled to gain his footing in one of NASCAR's most competitive series? Also, yeah, but despite all of his struggles at RCR, you have to tell yourself that some driver and team combos just don't mix, and we've seen that plenty of times. Joey Logano and Joe Gibbs Racing in the Cup Series, Bubba Wallace and Roush Fenway in the Xfinity Series, and most notably, Brad Keselowski and Hendrick Motorsports, to just name a few. What I've noticed in my years of watching and working in NASCAR, when a driver signs with a new team, it can really be a Russian roulette for a team to find out if they are going to be the next Furniture Row Racing success story or a bust like BK Racing. But for Brandon Jones, his two full seasons with RCR just showed how much he was battling with both his teammates and the cars itself. In 2016, RCR had just three Xfinity Series wins, all coming with Cup leeches Austin Dillon and Michael McDowell. And in 2017, not a single RCR driver found victory lane that season. In addition to Jones, RCR has fielded some other heavyweights as well. Both Dillon brothers, Daniel Hemrick, Brandon Gaughan, and Ben Kennedy to name a few. With four of those five drivers now having a full season of cup experience under their belts, it's shocking to see the best they could do was two wins by Austin Dillon. And keep this in mind, Austin Dillon only won at Fontana because Rowdy Bush's tire blew in the most bizarre NASCAR finish since 2007 Kansas. Since joining Gibbs, Jones has experienced some growing pains, but the better results were immediately noticed. Jones's top 5 and top 10 numbers have been higher than ever, and it really seems like Jones is finally starting to compete on a weekly basis. A lot of pundits were saying how bad he was because he crashes a lot, or he's a pay driver, but for those people I kind of have to say, really who isn't a pay driver anymore? With the ever-growing costs of NASCAR, most drivers need to have secure sponsorship to even stay in a ride, regardless of how talented they might be. Does having a rich dad help? I mean sure. 
but as we've seen before, some teams can just get fed up and say screw it. Look how many teams John West Townley had to go through before he finally had to start his own team. In my opinion, Jones has the skill and the talent to drive in this series. Managing top 10 and top 5 finishes is no easy task regardless of what car you're in. Even though it's only been 4 races into the 2020 season, Jones just proved that he can beat the best NASCAR has to offer. Jones didn't beat Kyle Busch by a fluke, he was genuinely faster and outdrove him. Spending his time developing in the Xfinity series will definitely help Jones for when he inevitably makes the jump to the Cup series probably around 2021 or 2022. I'd rather see Jones iron out all the kinks in the Xfinity series than come up to the Cup series way too early like Michael Annette and Danica Patrick. But at the end of the day, Jones has had many years of development ahead of him, as he's only 22. While it's easy to write the guy off, just remember that one or two bad seasons don't define a driver. Bouncing back from those seasons does. Jones, now JGR's leading veteran Xfinity Series driver, has done just that. That's all I got for this week of After the Flag. Thank you so much for watching, and if you like what you see, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do whatever you gotta do because it really does help me out. I also hope all of my viewers are staying safe and staying healthy, and as for me, I'm Alex Gallagher. Thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.